so yeah. this is where it all started. So I sell it with like probably within ten minutes. I said the, the white motherfucker, which was my um my uncle, Burke Callahan, and then I had this other girl, this other lady named Robin. So my father ended up having a baby by her. But, mm. they, yeah, but anyway, anyway, um, I sold it so fast, they're like, get, get some more. So I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm cool. So I ended up getting some more anyway. Before, I, before you know it, before I go to school, I probably even sold like seven, eight, eight balls. You know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing so, about the weight now. I don't right. know nothing about the eight ball to the quarter to the half to the ounce to the big. I'm clueless right. about any of that type of shit. When he give right. me something so, and say what it is, that's what it is. So, so you, so you copping and quote unquote eight ball, but you don't know that the eight ball is three and a half grams. No, I don't know none of that. <laughs> I don't know none of that shit, bro. <laughs> Oh, you know what's so crazy about that is you got you got all of these deeply involved criminal types in your immediate family, right? And he, they skip right past the basics of you know the the the, the weight and all that, whatever, and go straight to your pop this motherfucker get ahead for me real quick. <laughs> I mean, what? What? I'm sorry. Yeah, because you would think they like they call it so if I guess shelter me from the shit. So nobody never gave me a one on one for real. Wow. Nobody never nobody never talked to me about drugs. You know what I'm saying? No, my uncle, wow. my father, my mother, nobody. You know what I'm saying? So when that happened, so it went from there to the dude start giving me ounces, like it is to ounce. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be six hundred. You know what I'm saying? So again, I'm not really trying to make no whole lot of money. Right. So I might cut 630, 640. You know what I mean? Mm. So mm. here it go again. Now I'm selling six, seven ounces a day. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, but, I'm cool. I'm cool. Now I don't got to do no more. But but before but you know you, it, I got lines of people that use crack at the crib. At the crib? Yeah, at I'm at grandma my great-grandmother's house now. I'm at my great-grandmother's house. My my mother's mother's mother. Going, wow. to, school, going to college from there. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a little older now. She's older. She needs somebody to help her. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I got my little freedom. I'm, I'm fucking now. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to right. be over there and just be a little free or whatever. So Right. But I'm, you still don't know that uh, ounce Don't know the weight. Ounce. Don't know none okay. of that shit. Right. Don't okay. know none of that shit. Let me tell you how I find this so shit you, out. This shit crazy. You so, got lines. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm killing them. You know what I mean? I'm selling anywhere from 6 to 12 ounces a day. Killing them, bro. Killing them. So my uncle's, mm. one of my uncle's best friends, which his name is Tone, he came over there and said, I heard you hustling, bro. What you doing? Now they them them him and him and uh, uh his best friend, Nick, they they was known for the the cocaine and the weight. You know what I'm saying? And through the hood. They're the first ones with the vets, the Benzes, and all that old shit back in the day in the hood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The Jeeps, whatever came out, they was known to, to, to be that, the cocaine boys. So he came, I heard, I heard you hustling. I'm like, yeah, he like, he like, what you what you doing? I'm doing about six, seven miles a day. He like, oh, so you doing you you doing a damn, you you doing about a quarter, half a key? I'm like, no, nigga, six, seven miles a day. He like, that's a half. I'm like, I'm like, nigga, six, seven ounces, nigga. That's what I'm doing today. You know what I mean? Trying, don't be trying to belittle me talking about a half or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so he like oh my God. right so he like let me see what you're doing you know what i'm saying so um i showed him so he like uh you got a scale you got a triple beam triple beam <laughs> i ain't got no more tri triple beam what's that that's a scale you ain't got no skill <laughs> come on man <laughs> you're I'm killing sorry. me man <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry man <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Oh shit, bro! <laughs> he said, "I said I ain't Yo, got no motherfucking scale." Fact. So he like, he like, he like. All right, I'll be back. So he could go get the scale. Came back. He said, "Now you know what? I'm supposed to weigh 28." So I'm like, "Nah." So he he um balanced the scale out. Put the first ounce on there. It might have been like 19. You know what I'm saying? The second Wait, ounce. This is one of the. These are ounces that you've been previously. Sell. purchasing from someone else yeah cutting them up and selling them thinking that they okay. were whole ounces okay go ahead so so he's wearing your ounces he's wearing my ounces okay you know what i'm saying that's supposed to be ounces 
Right. You know, <laughs> so the second one was like 21. The third one might have been like 23. You know what I'm saying? Then 20. None of them 28. Jeez. He like, none of them 28. So like, this is what I'm finna do for you. I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna go get something for you. So he went and got me a key. Mm. So he brought it back. It's some powder for him. I'm like, bro, I don't sell this, bro. I sell this, the cookies. Oh, wait. You oh, Cass was selling you supposed zips of heart. Of heart. So she, you don't even know if he was really selling cocaine. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because back then, Benzo and all that shit was famous. You know? Woo, was it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, he went and got me a key. So I'm mm. like, man, I don't, he, he's like, you don't know how to cook? I'm like, no, I don't know how to cook. This is how he bring them. You know what I'm saying? Now, I've been rolling for probably about a month now. Wow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know wow. what I'm saying? So um, he um, gave me the key. He taught me his way of cooking, but I had another. But I had another friend. I had another friend named Tino, the one who actually introduced me to Charlie. He was a cook master. He was able to take a hundred grams and make it come back to like one seventy five, one eighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dry cook. Which you know, was straight uh, baking straight, soda. Straight baking soda and powder. He would, would put a hundred grams of um. Put a hundred gram, hundred grams of uh, yay in there. Put like about thirty three grams of soda, and just enough water to make it look milkshakey. Mm -hmm. Put it on the stove, let it cook, melt down, and then just spin it, spin it, spin it to it get to a uh, damn near hard, and just let it sit and get straight hard. That should be like one seventy, one seventy five. Mm -hmm. So the the the, the, coke, the material itself was good enough to hold yeah the soda yeah and and not have somebody get it and be like. Yo, that shit was straight bacon soda. Exactly. Yeah. So that shit was good. So that took my game to a whole nother stratosphere. Cause now my rock's so big, the guys that's normally buying ounces from even the person I was getting ounces from, they coming to buy six and seven hundred dollars worth of rocks for me. So now it goes from me doing the ounce shit to me selling no less, I swear to God, no less than $25,000 a day in dime rocks. No less. Now, now, now this is beginning a month after you first start touching hard. That's it. Cold period. And how long from the point that your uncle introduces proper weight, proper material, does your situation chunk to 25 racks a day shit probably a week man jesus christ how probably, old are you probably huh how old are you at that point 18 going on 19 mm, mm, mm. probably a week it wasn't no time because i i'm telling you i i, I had to have the motherfucking the 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 the, the top crack marketing motherfuckers in the world you mm, know what i'm saying like mm, everybody mm. followed these two for drugs, like everybody followed them. Oh, they you know were super touters. Yeah, so, you know, um, with them being my floor generals, like it was just, the sky was the limit. You know what I'm saying? And then when a person actually come and get the rock and see how big it is, that done that done its own thing. And then me, like, I was on some mad scientist marketing shit. Like I would just bust out and do, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was getting so much money. I just do the two for one. Yep. You know what I mean? So they like, how long yeah. is this gonna be? I don't know. Today your lucky day. You just gotta keep coming. I don't know when I'm gonna do it. Depends on how I feel. You know what I mean? So that made motherfuckers just, regardless if they they if they come or not, they getting the biggest rock. Period. Then you might fuck around and get a two for one. Where else they gonna go? Right. I had everything from probably Warren and Grand River to Wyoming and Warren. Wow. People buying rocks. Give, give people even the hustlers give people that uh aren't familiar with the geography of the d um mm -hmm. a, a, a kind of a space like uh in terms of mileage type okay. of thing in terms of mileage it might have been two miles each way mm -hmm. two miles this way and two miles this way so now the the operation 
is set up how? Like uh, you, you in you in a building, you in a you in the projects, you in a courtyard. How nope. you rocking? Like like it started off over my like I said over my great grandmother house, and what I used to do because I was doing so much, to start you know Detroit. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So. Uh, the side, uh, uh, the side of the house, I had a side door, and then right on top of the side door, going up the stairs, all the way up to the top of the the top floor, it's mm -hmm. a window right there in between the first floor and the second floor. So what I used to do, I used to put a cup, <laughs> a cup with a string and them little twenty five cent jug, jug juice jug cups, with you know one of the twenty five cent juices. <laughs> Tied us a string around there. They drop that motherfucker down. They put the money down. They put the money in there. Put it back up whatever it is. They put the rocks back down in that motherfucker. And, and that's how I was doing it. And it got so it got so crazy though. I had to get a, an actual rock house, which I got around the corner. You know, it's about two <laughs> blocks over. You know, um, and that's when it really, 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 really crazy. So, uh, who it, it, like you? You got a bottle. Like I mean, there were days. And bottling might take 10 hours. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so if you got a bottle, uh, you know, some somebody's gotta gotta, you know, handle the cooking. Um, you were working with rock initially, somebody was you know already cooking it for you. So oh, so you got your cooking guy. Yep. Um, who who's your table? Like you gotta have a table operation. Where would you where were you at the table at? At grand at great grandma's house? Yeah, at great grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, she she 80 years old. So she ain't moved doing too much moving around. You right. know what I'm saying? So I pretty much had the whole house. She basically lived in her bedroom. You right. You know what I'm saying? So I basically had the whole house. Um and she she wasn't I, aware of all the activity going on outside the, the window. Yeah, she was she was aware. Yeah. She was aware. No beefing. Nah, not really. Long as ain't no drama coming, right. she wasn't really Grandma tripping. Was the she was beefing more and more with the <laughs> it's some crazy shit. She was beefing more and more with the girls than she was my actual hustle thing. I remember one time, <laughs> one girl time, my grandmother moseyed upstairs, right, and caught a girl giving me some head. Oh boy! So listen, so I see the over the, the when I I seen the door closed back. I'm like, damn, I think my grandmother's seeing you. <laughs> she, she like you for real i'm like i'm telling you i think so so i don't, I don't know to be going down and go downstairs they was like okay bye big man don't talk this way don't talk get, get out don't talk this way put <laughs> <laughs> that dick on your breath get the fuck out of here <laughs> she told me girl don't talk this way get out the house just don't talk this way and you don't gotta come Woo. back just don't talk this way <laughs> Ooh, my god Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, so like I guess it was pretty much cool though. She wasn't really. I was really. A, I was still a good kid though. I was. I would do everything I supposed to do. Make sure she good. You know what I'm saying? Go to the store for her store runs. Sit there and talk with her. You know what I mean? Like, right. What, like I was a bad. Like just turned all the way. I was still a good, wholesome, moral type kid. That's interesting. You know, a lot of people, a, a large part of our of our society would automatically say that if you're selling drugs then you are you have no morals but um they don't they don't know that within that space within that world we have a very hard set or we used to there used to be a very hard set of morals and ethics hard set mm -hmm. not the kind of morals that when you didn't um stay in tune with them people frowned upon you and whispered about you the kind of mm -hmm. morals that you 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 either held this up or you get your head knocked off mm -hmm. so we were way more moral right you know within the within the you know the parameters of the life but yeah the, the people are going to definitely be like morals mm -hmm. he's selling crack out his great grandma house what kind <laughs> right. of morals he talking about <laughs> right but i'm taking care of the whole neighborhood how so I mean, just everything, man. It wasn't nothing that nobody couldn't come to me for. From crackheads that got pulled over with the jail, I'm going to get them out of jail. Like it was nothing that I won't do. You know what I'm saying? I I can just you know um, somebody can call me and got nothing in the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? I go get a house full of groceries. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm talking. About, it was nothing I didn't do, man. Like nothing that I wouldn't and, do that I didn't do. What would in that that type of behavior what would you attribute that to would you attribute that to the uh the, the familial raising or would you attribute that to 
you know, uh, feeling like you were taking, so you needed to give back? No, it never was that. It never was that. It was just always, I always seen that. Even though my father was a wreck, he always took care of the community. Mm -hmm. Like he always looked out for everybody. Everybody loved my dad, but he's a fucking goon. Mm -hmm. Like everybody, when I tell you love him, love him to the point to where as that police could never catch him in the hood. His right. door was open to the whole hood. That's right. You know what I mean? Like they never could deal, you know, like all of that. They'd take the gun, whatever. He can be running. Yep. Get somebody the gun, they tucking it. That, and that's, that's just all I've seen. My uncle, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of the hood. You know what I'm saying? That was selling weed, taking care of the hood, taking care of the people, making sure everybody good. We didn't have no, no robbing, no, no, no break, no being in, in like a six block radius each way because we governed that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We found out somebody broke into somebody, took somebody's shit. We going to get it back and we're going to make a statement. That's right. You know what I mean? So those are the type of things that I've done to whereas that I still have love in my hood today where I can go there and, li and literally live. It's been times when I've been so busy working, cutting, selling, woo, woo, woo. go upstairs. I fucking fall asleep just thinking I'm going to run up here, run up so I can leave my car on, run upstairs and end up falling asleep. Yep. Come back downstairs to the crackhead sitting in my car. I Running nobody, and sitting. I wasn't going to let anybody take your shit. I'm just going to sit here till you come down. I know it's your shit. That's right. Yeah, that's what I do. That's right. Yeah, we that's ride. Right. We go to dinner. I took him to the titty club. We had a ball that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that People don't understand how essential it is for a cat that's going to, you know, really be all right in those under those circumstances with so much danger in every direction. You got people want to rob you. You got people want to tell on you. You got people want you out the way so they can step in your shoes and all that. And to f survive in that in that that environment is it's about way more than being tough. You you it's it's good to be tough, but it's much better to be smart. Mm -hmm. And when you move in a way that people who are in those environments, man, like whether they are combatants or not, whether they participate on one side of the bag or the other, they know what it is. If they're a, a, a black person living in those types of environments, they know what it is and they know, you know, to some degree why it is. So it's really not about that as much as it is about, you know, how, how yeah. you go about it. Right. And mm -hmm. when you move the way that you move, um, even people who go to church every day and go to work every day, you know, they they know that if you're moving with sense and all that, whatever, you know, morals and ethics and stuff like that, that, you know, you're keeping things in order. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, and, and, and if something were to happen to you, they know that there wouldn't be another you coming along for a long time, if ever. Right. You know, so they protect you. Mm -hmm. And that that has a lot to do with lasting, you know? Yeah. Other because if you don't have that, then you got the opposite. You got everybody working and, and in honestly, every way possible to get rid of you. On, that's the only reason I'm still here right now today, bro. On how I manage my life from a moral perspective. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, and I had a family that didn't want to leave the fucking neighborhood. So it forced me to be more diplomatic than anything. Because if I hit and miss, my family done done. That's right. You know what That's I mean? Right. That's so right. I had to it figure right it out. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm a little, then I'm a little guy. I, I, you know, I just started getting some height on me when I was like 23, 24. So I was probably always like five, six, you know what I'm saying? Five, five, you know what I'm saying? 120 pounds. So, and I, I'm, I'm a loner. So I ain't right. had no crews. Right. So I had to have a brain and I had to have a heart and I had to know how to use these two together. Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. Big, big facts.